Louis, Chicago, the Knicks are playing the Bulls tonight. We are going through the Knicks game. Michael Jordan, the We're going to the Knicks game. is NBA Showtime. Here's your host, Hannah Storr. Michael Jordan arriving a short time ago for what could be an historic evening in Chicago as the Bulls seek win number 70. Standing in the way are Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks who desperately need to win tonight to secure the coveted third spot in the East. The NBA's best team faces its fiercest rival in a game with plenty at stake. The regular season comes to a close for the Knicks and the Bulls. Hi everybody, Hannah Storm along with Julius Irving and Peter Vesey and a weekend filled with important NBA games as the regular season comes to a close. Tomorrow our regional coverage at 3 o'clock Eastern Time features one of these three games and they are all important. Shaq and the Lakers trying to win the Pacific Division title by beating Portland. The winner of the Bullets and Cavs gets a playoff berth and Houston looks to sew up the third spot in the West. But first, let's get to the matchup tonight in Chicago, the final game of the regular season there, and the Bulls can make history on a couple of fronts. It's the last chance for them to win their 70th game and make it back-to-back 70-win -back seasons. Also, they can tie the 1985-86 Boston Celtics for best home record in a single season by going 40-1. and one. All of that aside, the Knicks have a lot at stake as well. A win clinches the third spot in the East and a likely playoff matchup with struggling Detroit. It also assures that the Knicks will not see the Bulls in round two. A loss for the Knicks would likely set up a very tough first round matchup against Charlotte with the Knicks owning home court advantage. With a game report, here's Marv Albert and Matt Gukas. All right, thank you, Hannah. And this has evolved into one of the most compelling rivalries in the NBA. And this season, the Knicks and the Bulls have met three times. Back in January, it was Michael Jordan's NBA season scoring high 51 points that led the Bulls to an 88-87 victory. March 9th at the Garden, the Knicks avenged that loss. Patrick Ewing's 32 points led the Knicks to a 97-93 win nine days ago in New York. Jordan with 20 points in the last seven and a half minutes. And Chris Child's last second shot did not fall as Chicago handed New York a 105-103 defeat. Tonight, their fourth and final meeting. We talked about it with Michael Jordan. We need to go out and go into the playoff with a win. Secondly, we don't want to give New York any opportunity to beat us on our home court to gain any kind of confidence from that. And uh, thirdly, I'm pretty sure everybody looking to try to seal up 70 wins if possible and, and we bounce, we're coming off a loss so it's, 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 it's very important for us to get ourselves back on winning track going into the playoffs. And Matt, tonight it's a final shot for Michael Jordan to average 30 points a game for the season for a record ninth time. He comes in at 29.6. All Michael has to do is go out and score 62 points against the Knicks and he's got it. Marv, even Michael on his hottest night, you can't expect anything like that. In fact, in his last 16 games, his scoring has dropped off five points a game, mainly because he's doing other things to make up for the absence of Tony Kukoc and Dennis Rodman. But Michael Jordan's goal tonight, finish with a 40 and one home record and win number 70. And it's been a long time between victories for the Knicks here in Chicago. The last time they beat the Bulls, it was the final game at the fabled Chicago Stadium. That was back in April of 1994. Uh, since then, including playoffs, the Knicks have lost 11 in a row here in the Windy City. And uh, for that ball game, a fellow by the name of Jordan uh, was not in uniform for the Bulls. He was chasing curveballs in Birmingham, Alabama. Anna? Thanks a lot, Marvel. He is there in full force tonight, and almost anything can happen, especially when it comes to Michael Jordan in this rivalry and typical of this rivalry. The games this year have all been decided in the last minute. It is not just the players who get into the spirit of dislike. The coaches have had a few things to say as well. The 
When you've always, in your career as a head coach, not just him, but anybody, has always coached the best team and the best player, it really clouds your uh, judgment about how tough a job it is. And I think he had been very, very disrespectful over the years about the efforts of the Knicks players and coaches about trying to win a championship. And I resented that fact. Uh, I resented about how he characterized our team as thugs and not basketball players. That's football, not basketball. I think the league really has to seriously look at uh, this kind of play and wonder if this is the kind of basketball they want. I don't know. You like being run over by Charles Oakley? <laughs> No, you want to get, I mean, you know, you want to get smashed by those guys? I don't know. Well, they're, got, they're a brute team. They got, are, they're a muscle You team. got your own gladiator now. Sure we do. We had to get Dennis. Basically, the league said, if you don't play this style of ball, you can't win. Jordan just looked over and waved bye-bye. When you see a team that is obviously up at a certain level and you want your team to get to that level and you have been beaten by that team time and time again to end your season, I think it's natural to be consumed and obsessed with beating them. One almost forgets in all of this that as a player, Phil Jackson won two championship rings with the New York Knicks. And now his animosity towards his former team is unmistakable. Well, Phil Jackson would love to put his mark in the record books as the only coach to win 72 games and then 70 games. If he loses, he has to share that second all-time mark with the 69-13 Lakers. And Jackson would love to do it against the Knicks because he still has animosity from the days when they wouldn't even give him an interview when Rick Pitino left for Kentucky. Meanwhile, the Knicks have plenty of motivation tonight besides of securing the playoff position, Doc. Why is tonight important for them? Well, you know, Bulls are their number one rival this decade. They have zero wins in this building. They played against this team while the team was missing players. The games have been close or they haven't beaten them. And if you're really a contender, you know, you beat teams when they're missing people. I emphatically believe that their preparation has reached a critical stage. And tonight, offensively and defensively, they must execute and they must win. How crucial is the number three spot, Peter, for New York? Well, if the Knicks are getting into three to avoid the Bulls, I think that's a mistake. They should just worry about getting out of the first round. The way that they've been playing the last 20 games, although they have the home court advantage in the first round, they could easily get knocked off. There is so much history here getting knocked off. In Chicago's four trips to the NBA Finals, they have eliminated the Knicks from the playoffs every single time. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up next, we'll check in on the Atlanta Hawks as they continue to battle for the number three spot in the Eastern Conference. And later, we'll hear from the Bulls' Scottie Pippen on one of his favorite topics, the New York Knicks.